Welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to OCP. Today is 33 out of my 90 day lead renewal. And at this point, I have fallen behind. Um, why have I fallen behind? So, in my last video, video 28 uh, or day 28, I mentioned I wanted to be at uh, lab completion and uh, lab report written by day 30. I'm now at day 33, so I'm about three days behind. I ended up getting stuck uh, for quite a bit of long time on some of the labs, uh, longer than I expected to get stuck, and a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of research, reading erratas to get updated information, and finally getting it all to work. Um, as of about 20 minutes ago, I finally finished all the required document labs. I still have to read section 18 um, of the book and watch those videos. And while there's no um, required labs in those areas, uh, or documented labs in those areas, section 18 it kind of brings you through the whole life cycle, which I think is very important to read um, through just to make sure there's no little tips or hints in those areas that can lead you to additional boxes in the lab. I am currently at about 22 boxes, I believe, in the lab itself. So I did get to take a couple more uh, shots at more boxes as I went through more labs, kind of gave me some ideas. I went back quickly, exploited different boxes. Um, so while the labs may only be worth five points, um, it's definitely worth going through them because you may find additional information you didn't know or different, different ways to attack other boxes in the labs, uh, to get some additional, uh, boxes done. Um, with that being said, um, what else is going on? So a couple of, uh, areas I had, uh, I had two interesting questions, um, posted on my YouTube channel. First one is... It was from a user about um, possible exploitation from other users on the network uh, attacking his box and basically uh, give me a warning about being careful not to get owned or something on the boxes. My response to that is, um, and I, I posted it in my channel too, but basically anytime you contact, um, put your box on a hostile network, you should make sure it's secure or expect it to get owned. Our Cali images are throwaway images. I, I know that a lot of us store a lot of stuff on here, but if you haven't tied it to like a Dropbox or some other type of backup and put all your files that you want to keep into that directory to get backed up, you're expecting this just to be a throwaway. Uh, in my opinion, right? You, everyone does things their own way. However, one of the things I do whenever I get my Cali image, especially when I connect to Hack the Box, uh, the OCP labs or any other hostile network is I apply firewall rules uh, to my machine. So my internal interface, my main interface, if you want to call that on my VM uh, that talks to my host is firewalled down. So no traffic can go from my VM to the host unless it's required for the application to work for the VMware to work, run. So basically I couldn't SSH from my Kali box to my Mac. Or from my Mac to my Cali box. I can't SMB from my Cali box to my Mac. Now, does that make it harder sometimes for backing up files and stuff? Yes. Um, but I'm not worrying about that. I have a different backup software that's moving my files out um, out to the cloud so I can store them out there. And yes, someone can hack that and delete that. But that account's only tied to this. So if that's attacked, owned, I lose my OSP work and that's it. Um... I also lock down my tunnel interface. My tunnel interface only allows tunnel traffic. It's a VPN tunnel, so everything's encapsulated within the VPN tunnel, so port 80, 443, NetBIOS, all that stuff is going across encrypted. There's no reason to allow all the other ports there. You don't want to allow the user to be able to attack your Kali and jump from your Kali into your home network, into your work network, wherever you're using this from. So whatever you think is the safest way to secure that, do so. Um, I also locked down my Kali. I changed the default password a few years back. Um, it was extremely funny. I was at DEF CON and you had all these kids running around buying Wi-Fi pineapples and not knowing how to use them. And they left the default username and password. And all of a sudden someone wrote uh, like a Rick, uh, Rick Roll script that been, went around owning all these pineapples. They got tired of these kids trying to take down the network and stuff like that with these pineapples. So this script went through, changed the password, defaced all the pineapples. Same thing with Kali. If you're not locking down your services and changing your passwords, you, you got to expect to get owned. I know I'm ranting here about this, but it, it's to me it's common knowledge, right? Anytime you plug a device to a hostile, hostile network, you need to expect it to get owned 
or at least attacked. So you need to make sure you're locking it down. Um, turn off your services. If you're not using a certain service, shut it down. Turn on logging so you're alerted or at least you have an idea who's connecting to you. Um, I, I read somewhere that OSP supposedly blocks um, traffic from other uh, students to you, but that doesn't stop students from owning a device and then coming back to you. That's why your reverse shells work, right? Because you're able to own that box and send traffic back to yourself. So you never know what's happening in these environments. Also, don't leave your machine connected all the time, right? If you don't need to be on, disconnect. Um, next question I had was around pen testing and the life of, as a pen tester. Uh, I've been doing pen testing for several years now, and it's different from job to job, right? Uh, and it really depends how your organization sees pen testing and how it has been defined. One of the biggest uh, issues I see is I see a lot of companies tie vulnerability management or vulnerability uh, testing to pen testing. And really the two are different, but they are vulnerability testing is a step into pen testing uh, where vulnerability management or testing, you're basically just checking for a vulnerability. You're not actually validating that the vulnerability exists through exploitation where pen testing is actually you're exploiting that vulnerability and validating that it does truly exist. Um, all together um, with all the different flavors of pen testing and things like that, everyone follows a similar methodology and the methodology is kind of really laid out well in the book, especially in section 18. Um, basically, you're gonna have your scoping calls, your information gathering sessions with your client. You're gonna have your project management. You're gonna be in a ticket queue, basically getting assign new tasks. Um, you're gonna be testing the application. If you're a web application pen tester, you're gonna be testing web applications pretty much all day long. Um, does your role expand past web applications? Um, if you find a floor, are you able to jump into the server? That's really depending on your organization. Some people will be doing mobile, some people will be doing networking, some will be doing all of it. They'll be able to uh, scope out a project and really see what is vulnerable, what needs to be tested in a project. And those I think are the more interesting roles because you're not limited to one technology. You're able to expand your skills and uh, take on different um, different roles in the uh, organization as you're doing testing. Uh, a lot of the cool stuff that everyone thinks pen testers do doesn't really exist um, in a uh, professional environment. Uh, as pen testers, yeah, we get to try out new exploits, things like that, but we got to be careful. We're, we're not attacking a production machine with a zero day exploit. We're not uh, taking down a production machine. We're not altering data that's going to destroy this machine. Um, we got, really got to be careful in our attacking our methodologies and what we're doing to avoid taking out or causing outages to companies. Uh, it's not like Hack the Box or uh, OSCP where you go and quickly hit reset and your box is back online. Uh, most organizations don't operate that way. If you take out a production server, that production server is going to be offline for a while. That company's going to lose money and then they're going to hold you responsible for that. Um, <clears throat> and then also like a lot of travel and stuff like that too. So it depends what role you take as a pen tester. Um, I happen to recently land a role where I don't travel at all. Uh, I get to work remote a good part of my time. Um, I do go to the office um, to see people and do things like that. But basically I have the flexibility to be on site, off site, and not have to travel, which is a big thing for me because I have younger kids. So traveling is really out of the scope for me right now. But if you're able to travel and you're younger, take advantage of that now. Um, look at these larger consulting firms like EYs, P, PwC, uh, yeah, PwCs, KPMGs, um, Deloitte, Deloitte, and other ones that um, are looking for testers uh, from junior range up to senior range where you're going to be traveling 60 plus percent of your time. Uh, these roles, while you're traveling a lot, you're going to get to see a lot of cool areas, a lot of cool cities, uh, different companies you're going to get to work with, building up a lot of experience uh, with different technologies. And it'll give you a lot of time as you're building uh, where you want to be in life, right? Uh, for us older folk that are now married, kids, things like that, those roles are not something we're really looking for, looking at um, because we want to be home with our families and things like that. Um, outside of travel and uh, scoping calls and testing wise, really, it's um, really the, the main pen testing really comes back down to the same thing. Doesn't matter if you're traveling, doesn't matter if you're remote, doesn't matter if you're a consultant, doesn't matter if you're uh, working in-house, we all follow that similar methodology of 
scoping, information gathering, uh, enumeration, exploitation, post-exploitation, if that's within scoop, and then final report writing. Uh, there's no way out of the report writing. And then eventually you probably have to present to your client or to your uh, organization. So having good speaking skills, uh, good technical writing skills are very important as well. Uh, hopefully I covered a, a good area around that question. Um, it's not as superstar as people make it seem, but it's definitely one of the cooler positions in uh, IT security in general. Uh, we get to play with a lot of stuff, we get to break stuff, we get to meet a lot of interesting people. And when I say break stuff like in labs and things like that, we're not breaking production. Um, so if anyone has any other questions around pen testing or doing it as a career or things like that, just comment below and I'll be more than glad to try to answer for you. I, as I said, I'm, I don't consider myself any superstar professional. Uh, what I do in my day to day differs than what uh, my buddy at XYZ company does in his day to day. And it's really defined by your company, your job title and your position within the company of uh, what you're going to be seeing and what you're going to be doing. It's up to you as an employee uh, before taking that position and really define what you want to be doing. Um, if the job doesn't match where you want to be, uh, maybe that's not the job for you. You don't want to take a job and leave a few days later, a few months later. You want to be able to build a career and show stability within your career path uh, to help um, on the next job and job like that. A lot of times if they see job jumpers, um, it, it, it kind of gets frowned upon. Companies don't want to uh, invest a lot of time and money in people that constantly jump jobs because it costs them money to bring you in and train you up. Uh, with that being said, let's jump over to the next thing uh, for this uh, video. Uh, I got turned on to an awesome tool called Crap Map, Crack Map uh, Exec. Um, cool tool. I was having some issues with Pass, Pass the Hash uh, Labs, and uh, Erica over on the OSP Study Group page mentioned this program. I don't think I ever came across it before. Uh, I started using it, and it's kind of like um, password spraying, but with uh, hashes. Uh, it does a lot of other cool uh, things too, too, and I'll let you check that out for yourself. But one of the cool features I found with this is I'm able to take hashes and basically uh, spray across the network after applying proper password policies and other configurations to avoid lockouts. Um, this hash to see where other, where other boxes I can use this hash on. Uh, which saves a lot of time. Um, so if you're going through the, the labs or just in general, um, I would definitely check out this program. Check out the functionality to see what the password lockout policies are. So you could basically configure your, um, your checking, your spraying, whatever you want to call it, to not lock out machines as you're going across. You don't want to be locking out service accounts. If you have a service account hash, that could just cause a wide range of problems. But um, in the OSP labs, it was great. You're able to set your IP range, your, your user, your hash, and it'll go through and validate it all. And at first, I was getting some weird results, so I actually just used against one IP, the box I knew that was vulnerable, basically where I got the hash from to test, and it, it started working. So I knew I could start using that elsewhere, and as I started doing that, I was able to find other boxes. Um, what else is going on? So status updates. What am I looking at completing now? So I kind of touched about that earlier. Um, I am at day 33, as I said. That leaves me about uh, 57 days left in the labs. Hopefully another day or two to get the report written. And then from there, just owning machines and getting my, uh, getting my exam scheduled. So I'll be giving you guys updates of machines, other tools and techniques as I come across them. Um and go from there. Uh, as I said earlier, if you haven't done the labs yet, do the damn labs. Um, <laughs> they suck to get through, believe me. You'll feel demotivated at times, you'll feel beaten at times. Uh, it's all part of that try harder attitude. And you just have to knuckle through it and get through it. It's five extra points, which doesn't sound like a lot, but taking it from someone who has failed the exam by, not, by very few points the first time, where five points might have been the difference of pass and fail. Um, I kicked myself in the butt for that because now I'm back at this again. Um, but I guess if I passed the first time, I wouldn't be sitting here right now talking to you. <laughs> so um, with that being said, make sure you get your labs done. Um, I look forward to talking to you guys in my next video. If you guys have any questions, comments, things you want me to talk about outside of the OCP, post them below. I'm always open for new ideas for content for this channel. Um, the channel is growing greatly. We're at like 780 something users right now. 
I'm really pushing for that thousand user mark. So make sure that you guys share out this video. If you haven't done so already, check out my other video where I'm either giving away a free $10 Amazon gift card or a free copy of the Red Team Field Manual. Um, it's up to the winners, uh, the winner to decide which one they want. Uh, if you're looking at purchasing or anything on Amazon, check out my uh, store, store.digitaloffensive or digitaloffensive.com slash store. You can search on there through Amazon, order anything on Amazon through that link, and uh, I'll get a commission for that through Amazon Affiliates. Uh, you don't have to, but I figure I'll throw it out there. Uh, if you like to sponsor any of my videos, any of my content, you have an idea, reach out to me. You can uh, find my contact information through YouTube uh, or based on one of my social media um, links below. Thanks again. Like the video, subscribe, share out to your friends. Till next time.